I didn't notice the cats and I really like cats. <laughs> <laughs> now I notice them. Hi, I'm Bridget Moss. I write Breathing Space for the Pool and today I'm with the amazing author and comedian Michelle Lurie who has written a book called Buddhism for the Unbelievably Busy and she's going to share with us how Buddhism has helped her with her busyness. Mm, get some breathing space, in fact. So Michelle, I'd always thought of Buddhism as chanting and temples, but you're using it in everyday life. Yeah, I'm not the only one who's using it in everyday life. Buddhism's very pragmatic and very sensible, and that's what attracts me to it. I know a lot of people think it's airy-fairy and um, it's about magic and stuff. It's not. And in fact, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is very down-to-earth and sensible. That's what attracts me to it. Very pragmatic. So what, um, why is Buddhism good for modern life? How does it fit in? Well, because Buddhism is all about cutting through the noise and getting to the truth, getting to the reality of the situation. And increasingly, we just have so much noise in our lives. For me personally, I just got to a point where I realised that being unbelievably busy was making me really unhappy. So how can Buddhism help us, help everybody unpack why they're so busy and stressed? and living this kind of fast, unhappy, fast-paced life. Yeah. I mean, I started with a very basic process of going through my diary and right. looking at the week ahead. And that would probably make me quite depressed because I'd see how little sleep I was going to get, how much running around I had to do. And I would see things that I was dreading and didn't want to do. And so I started thinking, why am I doing all of these things one by one? Why am I doing this? Is it serving me? Is there a real purpose? Or did I just get caught up in a moment and say yes? Or am I doing it because it's a habit? You know, so that, that was my process. But also you looked at the, actually why you thought busyness was a good way to live yeah. as well. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, well, that, a lot of it was ego for me. I, I enjoyed being the busiest person. Um, it gave you power, you said, yes. in your family. Yeah, well, that's because the way I grew up, my father was very busy. He worked a lot. My mum uh, worked as well, but sort of the narrative in our home was that dad works so hard, he's so busy. So he gets away with everything. Uh, I wanted to be dad. I wanted to be the most powerful person in the house. I wanted to be able to blow in and out when I felt like it and have somebody else there holding the fort for me. So how can people start to create space in their lives and stop feeling this kind of pressure of business? Well, as I say, go through things one at a time. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying, we have a lot of pressure on us. Women have a lot of pressure on us to be achieving in every way. Even as a parent, I have so much pressure on me. So I'm living the life as a mum but at the same time, I feel like I'm living the life that my dad lived where I'm working all the time. Um, so yes, one by one, I just need to unpack all of these things. I need to deal with my ego, which, which tells me that the busiest person is the best person. And also checking in with myself and how much I'm changing. I'm a, I'm a different person to the person I was yesterday, let alone to the person I was 20 years ago when I embarked upon this career. And I sort of set up a list of goals and I realised I'm still working to that list, even though I'm a completely different person. Mm -hmm. And those goals don't mean anything to me anymore and they don't make me happy anymore. So that's also a key one. It's just being really clear with yourself about why you're doing all of the different things that come together and make you unbelievably busy. I think there's an interesting chapter on money, because mm. obviously everyone needs to earn a living, but you talk about it being a kind of cycle that people, you, you work really hard, so you think you deserve stuff in order to get happy again, so then you need to do even more work in order to get back to kind of zero. Yeah. What do you call that? That's a, a work treat cycle, that's what I call it. So um, I'm working really hard, so I deserve a nice holiday. But to pay for the nice holiday, I need to keep working really hard. <laughs> I'm working really hard. I deserve a big TV on my bedroom wall, a big smart TV. So I, in order to get that, I need to work really hard. So how do you get back to knowing what is important? Stop. Oh, talking about mindfulness and living in the moment, how do you, do you practice that every day? Because obviously meditation is a big part of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. 
How much time do we have to spend meditating? Oh, very little. The key thing about meditation is everyone thinks everyone else is better at it. Right. It, you know, it's... Is nobody good at it? No. Though? No one's any better. I'm <laughs> Even not, monks. Oh, well, they're probably pretty great at it, I think. But it's called a practice for a reason. Right. It's really about listening to yourself. We don't get a chance to do that very often. So if you can find a place to sit, and you don't have to be cross-legged on the floor or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I do it in the car oftentimes okay. because I'm alone and I'm early for something, so I'll just sit in the car and do it. Um, about really breathing and listening to your breathing and then thinking about the breath moving in and out of your body. And I think that's a really great kind of metaphor for hearing yourself. Okay. For, for listening to yourself, to listening to what's really going on with you. Checking in. Yeah, checking in. And we fill our lives with treats like screens and Netflix and all those things to stop us from checking in with ourselves, don't right. we? We fill up our time so we're so afraid of boredom. And emotions. And emotions. You write a lot about emotions. Yeah. About that... We we do other things to squash them all the time. Yeah, is that is that what everybody does? Are we all doing that? I think we're all doing it to different degrees. I'm still probably doing that, but I think I'm better at it than I was. That was what attracted me to Buddhism in the first place. I realised that I was emotionally pretty erratic, and for me, that's the most beneficial part: is focusing on my emotions, taking responsibility for my emotions, saying to myself, "No one makes me happy or sad." That's me. That's my reaction to things. And what's great about that is I can change that. Meditation really does help. Right. Again, that moment alone with yourself to listen to yourself. Yeah. You'd be amazed what comes up. And then after that, I would suggest maybe at some stage sitting down with a cup of tea by yourself. No TV, no radio, mm -hmm. no screens. Right. Maybe a journal. Right. And ask. Ask yourself. Really think down deep into it. Why do I need to be busy? Yeah. Or why am I reacting to this situation? And then just writing? Yeah. And seeing what happens? Yeah. Oh. And you'd be amazed how it sticks with you. The other thing is setting your intention in the morning. This is a really quick, easy thing to right. do when you first wake up or maybe when you're in the bathroom, brushing your teeth. What is my intention today? And actually... What is your intention today? My intention today yeah. is uh, to not panic about being in this big city and I'm very excited to be in London this is like dream come true stuff for me but not getting carried away with right. myself not letting my either my ego or my fear override me at the moment staying calm right middle path can you explain um the hungry ghost because this is an amazing kind of buddhist is it a philosophy or a... well the hungry ghost is part of the beautiful flamboyance of Buddhism. The hungry ghost is this beautiful, very sad, melancholy creature who is, uh, has a very huge stomach, huge stomach, and has a very long, thin neck and a tiny mouth. So what that means is that he can never be satisfied. This right. big stomach is always growling, desperate for satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And there's, I mean, you just can't poke anything down there. <laughs> big enough, you can't ever be satisfied. You can't ever fill up. And you, you say lots of people are walking around like that. So yeah. they're always looking for something. Oftentimes I would achieve a goal. Right. And by the time I'd achieved it, I didn't even really celebrate because I was thinking about something else. I'd moved on to another goal. I right. never gave myself... Let yourself enjoy it. Yeah. So that's what I'm yeah. doing right now, by the way, is just really enjoying being here with you yeah. because this is massive to me. And, and, and celebrating the fact that you've written... Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal, it right? It is a big deal. People, I think, again, we're just in a cultural moment where we're chasing... Comparison. Bigger, better in comparison. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that idea of stopping to smell the flowers is really an important one. And when you string enough of those moments together, I mean, it becomes a habit. Right. It becomes a thing where you stop when you're walking um, somewhere and you look at the cat, the beautiful cat that's lying in the sunshine, and you stop and you take that in and you go, wow, that is a good feeling lying in that sunshine. And you string enough of those moments together and suddenly your life is full of contented moments. And that's a big shift from my life used to be I can't see anything. I'm just focused Striving. on moving forward. Yeah. yeah. When we're busy all the time, we never rest. And you talk about the, you write about the importance of rest. Mm. Rest is incredibly important. You can't pour from an empty cup is the expression I use in the book. Right. We can't keep giving if we don't fill up. 
you know, feel, feel ourselves and rest is the simplest place to start. Well, I think everybody should rest, go to bed and read this amazing book, which may just change your life. Thank you so much, Thank Michelle, you. for coming to talk to the pool. Thank you. Really happy to have oh, you. Oh, I'm thrilled. Thank you.